right, hello. Better late than never. I feel like I say that a lot. <laughs> um, but we're ready to paint our Hello Spring craft kit of the month. This is actually the completed one. This is what we're working towards. I guess I can put my little Valentine's one away, huh? That's what we'll be making. Let's see, I'm gonna turn this way a little bit maybe. And then we got our little boots and our little April showers round. Ta-da! And then we got our little Hello Spring sign. So that's what we're going to be working on. Um, grab yourself, uh, I'm gonna add a little more water to my water cup for my brushes. And then make sure you've got something to put your paint out on to like dip into. Um, probably a paper towel. I think that's probably about it. I'm gonna put my apron on so I don't get my cute little Julie's Woodcrafts t-shirt dirty. All right, water for the paint brushes. So you can see that's what we're going to be working on. I love these little sign sets. Um, you could have ordered a crate in addition to go with yours. Um, so if you did, you can set yours up in a crate. If you didn't, which most people didn't, you might already have one um, if you have some of my other sign sets. So you can just switch it out for spring. Or you can use them other places like obviously i just quickly did a little setup right there um you can use the little tear trays from your valentine i mean sorry the little um the little easel stands from your valentine set if you got a valentine set lean them up somewhere if you've got a little tear tray you could stick them in a tear tray so all sorts of places that you can use our cute little hello spring set so part of the reason i was late is because one, I started chatting with Gloria, and when we start chatting, sometimes we don't pay attention to time because she is working today. She's going to be painting a bunch of things and packaging up orders. It has been a very busy week. So then last minute, I was like, oh, shoot, I got to cut myself a craft kit of the month. Um, so I have one to paint, and I apparently put in the laser real quick and had not updated the settings for this material. So it didn't cut through perfectly. So then I had some pieces that didn't come out. I had to recut and then it didn't come out well. And blah, 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 blah. Y'all don't want to hear it, right? So it just meant that a few of these pieces needed a little bit of extra love because they didn't cut out perfectly. I would not have sent this to anybody in their craft kit of the month. <laughs> But it is fine for me painting mine. There we go. Also, um, the craft kit of the month, these little sunsets here, is um, takes a little bit longer to paint than some of our others. So I'm gonna do a little, as Gloria told me, it's like cooking shows. I'm gonna do a little bit of the before and then be like, ta-da, here's what it looks like. Um, so that we don't paint it all because I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember when I painted that first set. I think it was around an hour and a half to like an hour and 45 minutes maybe it took me. I know some people paint faster than I do, some people paint slower than I do, so it's kind of, you know, hard to tell exactly how long it would take you. But I like to keep it between an hour and an hour and 15. Um, so I'm only going to paint some of the things. Um, just to help us because I mean the idea is right like any tips and tricks I give you these little pieces that want to come out um, you know you don't have to watch me paint the whole thing to know so 
If you are joining me, I know this is a random time to be doing a live paint, but please say hello. Um, I am getting ready for the um, Vintage Market Days of Chattanooga. Our load-in day is tomorrow. It's actually in um, Chickamauga, Georgia. It's not even actually in Chattanooga. Well, I just messed that up. But anyways, should be a great show, supposed to be very busy. So I, um, Gloria and I have been super busy this week trying to get everything done. So part, another part of the reason I was behind for today, just kind of all over the place. I know some of y'all can relate. You're like, I have 5 million things to do. Let me see if I can do them in the order that makes the least amount of sense. <laughs> uh, not on purpose. It just happens. Right? And then all of a sudden you're scrambling. You're like, oh, I should have done this yesterday instead of that. Blah, blah, blah. So. But I am happy to sit down and paint because it will calm my soul a little bit. Um, which is the idea, right? That's why I love the craft kit of the month. That's why I love the concept of crafting. It's not just a catchphrase that it's cheaper than therapy. Like I really do feel like this is a form of therapy. Um, just the ability to block out the world and focus on something enjoyable for just a little bit of time. All right, y'all been watching me get my pieces together here that didn't quite cut right on the laser this morning. All right, that'll do for now. If I gotta touch up any other pieces, we'll do it on an as needed basis. Okay, I would like to start with the round. Um, and the rectangle, and then the rectangle for the sign here, for the Hello Spring, because they're all gonna get painted white. I'm not gonna paint this one, right? Because once we do two, you'll get the idea. Um, what I did with mine is I painted them um, with just one coat of white. It gives it a little bit of like a whitewashed kind of look. Um, so I like that, right? It gives it just like kind of like a little thinner sort of see-through kind of look for it. So your big brush that you got here, you're going to use this one for the white since you've got three different things to paint white. And we're going to do the top of the umbrella white. Okay, so open up your white paint pouch. I'm just going to cut a little corner to make sure I keep it real small. I've discovered when I use the paint pouches, y'all might have figured this out too. It's easier to cut a corner because if you tear across the top like they're meant to do, and then you have like this huge opening, right? And then you've got paint just coming out all over the place. So I just cut a little corner, a little bit easier to control. All right, I don't even have a drink of choice with me today. I always have a drink of choice. But in true crazy morning fashion, um, of course, I went to take a sip of my coffee like, right before I came on here to do the live. And it was cold because I had neglected it. So I was like, I'm not, I'm not drinking cold coffee. I mean, I can if I must, but... One day I want to do a live paint from like vacation somewhere. My, beat, my, my drink of choice for that live paint will be a beach drink with an umbrella, like a pineapple slice. That would be fun. All 
Um, I'm painting the side of the circle with the little lines etched into it. Just gives it a little extra dimension is why we did that. As you're painting, if you are new to doing the craft cut kit with me, for as far as painting any of my pieces, always pull the paint towards the edge. Don't come from the edge in because then the edges catch all the paint off the brush and you get a whole bunch of paint gooped up on the edge there. So come from the inside of the paint piece to the outer edges. All right. I am going to obviously let this dry, but I'm not going to do another coat because let's see if we can tell. I kind of like that little whitewash sort of look to it. And I'm going to do our Mayflowers one. And I'm going to do the same thing with it. And kind of pull the paint out. So I get it a little bit thinner than normal. And some of y'all like this look. I've talked to some of y'all before about it. Like it shows and stuff that like where I do two coats on a lot of stuff, some of y'all just do one coat. I mean, it is faster, right? It dries faster, all of that. Um, but also it does just lend itself to a little bit different of a look. Yeah, so I'm excited and nervous about the show this weekend, Vintage Market Days of Chattanooga. Should be a great show. I've heard fabulous things like big crowds, all of that. But also just makes me nervous because it's a new show, so I just don't know what to expect. And I know that like loading in at this show is complicated because this Mountain Cove Resort where it is, it's like on a mountain. So you have to have like an alternate way to drive in with a trailer because otherwise you're going to get caught in these like switchbacks on the mountain, pulling my trailer, I'd prefer not. Um, but anyways, there's that one done. Look, a little whitewashed. You're also going to paint your little name sign here. You're going to paint that white too. Like I said, I'm skipping that part just to save us a little bit of time. Um, you can obviously pause it, paint, come back and catch up with me. Um, but that'll get painted white as well. All right, then I'm going to paint the um, umbrella. But yeah, so getting there and like setting up and figuring out, you know, where to go and check in and where do we park the trailers and, you know, just like, what's the setup gonna be like? Am I gonna be on asphalt or grass? And they weren't able to tell me that yet. And, um, you know, no fault to their own, right? Um, they're busy setting up for an awesome event. So it's just, yeah, just a little bit of nerves because I don't know what the crowd's going to be like. I don't know what the setup's going to be like. Right? All these things that you're like, so many unknowns, right? Another reason doing this this morning is nice because it will calm my spirit a little bit so then I can get back into the workshop afterwards and just start making my way through my to-do list of all the last minute things. All right. Um, I'm going to put a second coat on that because I want it to be like a solid looking white. Um, so I'm going to give that a second to dry, but I'm not going to put this in the water yet because I'm going to use that again. But that's it for the white. Um, like I said, you're going to paint that too that I'm not done. So let's work on the things that are turquoise. Light turquoise is what it's called. It's an Anita's acrylic craft paint as usual. So let's open up some light turquoise here. You're going to use one of your sponges for this. I 
Where did I put my sponges? There they are. Those are trash. Go throw those away. All right. So the Hello Spring words are going to be turquoise. Again, I'm not going to do those because um, those are all pretty straightforward. So you can do those words. The April showers, May flowers, those are both going to be turquoise. So you got a little wood piece stuck in here I need to poke out. There we go. Um, and then the boots are going to be turquoise. And the stripes on um, the umbrella are going to be turquoise, which we will come back to when we get to finish up the white on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, I'm gonna use the skinny end of the sponge, scoop up a good bit, and I'm going to paint our boots. This one, you can decide if you want a really solid look to it, or if you want a kind of white wash, you could just do one coat, or turquoise washed, I suppose. Trying to get a nice, smooth, even coat so that the possibility exists that I could just do one coat on this. If I like the way it dries, we will see. All right, so now when you're doing words, if you're new with this, this is part of the reason I love my little sponges, is you're just going to dip a little bit of paint on the end there and not too much. You might even dab some off. And then you're just going to go around and like dab the paint onto the words. Ooh, here we go. Ah, there we are. See if that helps, right? So I am just dabbing the paint onto there. Right, just so you get a sense of what I'm doing here. And this is by far the easiest way to paint little words. Well, you're doing a lot at a time, we spray paint. But we are not. We are sitting down doing one at a time. So there's the idea. Let's zoom us back out. Right. I tend to like um, doing two coats on words. I just like my words to be like really bright and solid. So I will probably do a second coat on that one. But you don't want to put too much paint on the sponge. It's going to smudge all over the edges. So dab a little bit off. A little exacto knife work here. Jeffy, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. <laughs> uh, my husband Keith went into the room without letting Jeffy in, so now he's scratching on the door because poor buddy can't be ignored. Poor Jeffy can't be ignored. All right. Um, I'm going to go and do my second coat of white on the umbrella that I wanted to do, just to make it a really solid white. All right, um, and so then I'm done with the white, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in my water, then I can use those brushes again when you get more DIY kits from Julie's Woodcrafts. You will have your own set of sponge brushes ready to go, foam brushes. All right, these paints on the little words here dry super quick, so I'm ready for our second coat. If 
For those of you who are newer to the craft kit of the month, of course, if there are ever any issues, if a paint pouch explodes, something breaks, you know, anything, send me a message. We will help you out and get it straightened out. Yeah, if a piece is missing, any of that. wood piece stuck again. There we go. I think it's all looking pretty good with the second coat. Double check the spots where I was touching. It's usually where I mess it up. If you get some of our DIY kits with bigger words, you can do the same approach, but just do it with one of the bigger um, like foam brushes like we were using on the white. But still, I promise you the dabbing approach is the easiest way to do it for things that are kind of like detail cuts. Otherwise, there's so many edges. If you try to paint across it, all the edges catch all the paint. Um, so this method, although elementary, is really a great way to do it. All right, so May flowers, April showers, although I really prefer no April showers this weekend. I am happy with the finish on that, so I'm not gonna second coat that one. All right, now I don't think that's quite dry enough for me to do my little turquoise stripes on it. So I'm going to move on. Let's see what we're moving on to. What do we want to do next? Let's go ahead and work on the flower pot. I'm going to move this so we can see our little flower pot there. So grab your flower pot. All right, the bottom part of the flower pot is going to get painted gray. You will have definite leftover paint from this because there are a lot of pieces that just require like a really small amount of paint. So, um, Sorry, I got some little pieces stuck in here. They're just gonna be covered up with flowers anyways. Okay, so yeah, you're gonna have leftover paint because like this gray is minimal. So I am using the skinny end again. I tend to use the skinny end a lot. I feel like I can control it much better. So I'm just drawing a line across basically where I think the uh, top of the flower pot is and then down. Now your flowers and things are gonna cover up some of this, right? So you've got a little, Leroy doesn't have to be perfect there. But that's how I drew mine. I'm gonna make it go a little higher on this side. There we go. So that's what I've got here. Then the top part, we're gonna do green. Not that all of this is gonna be seen, Right, but the little leaves sticking out around the edge are going to be seen. So get out your leaf green. I forgot to bring a pouch out for that. And I think your green might actually be a little darker than the one I'm about to use. So this is all the only one I have sitting at my craft table. This one is lily pad green, but I think what you got is leaf green. Um, Minor details. All right, skinny end again. So I'm just gonna paint the entire 
top part here, that green, like I said, you're not going to see it all, but just so I don't miss a spot, I'm just doing the whole thing. And then I'm just tracing that line. I see where I missed a little corner here with gray. So fixing that. There we go. Who's that here now? That's Savannah. Hi, Princess Savannah. All right, so I've just painted the whole top green, so whatever sticks out is going to look green. You can decide if you want to second coat that as well. And then let's take a look at our flowers. These are where some of mine might need a little help. So you can kind of look at the picture on the website, or I've got mine here, um, or the pictures in the Facebook page, right? So you've got a couple different flowers, and you have two very small ones. One of the two small ones and the one shaped like this are going to get painted pink, as well as the frame are going to get painted pink. Before I do that... Right, these are my pink things here. Um, I am going to double check on my umbrella, see if we're ready for the turquoise. Yes, I am. All right, so this one, I'm using the skinny end of the sponge again. You've got lines etched on here to kind of help you line it up. Does not have to be perfect. Nobody's looking that close. And if they are, not cool, not cool. So I'm just going to try to pull this along the little etched lines to create my umbrella. If you don't want to, if it stresses you out to make the little striped umbrella, paint the whole thing turquoise if you want, or yellow, or purple, or pink, right? You've got, oh, I forgot, gray, gray for the handle of the umbrella. Since we have the gray out from the flower pot, let me do that real quick. There we go. Gotta have this gray handle. All right, so again, if you don't wanna do the stripe, do not have to. You can make it a solid color umbrella. Nobody will be any the wiser. It also helps if your eyes work better than mine do. Anyone else? <laughs> I have not made it to the bifocals yet, but I probably should. And then I like to paint the little, of course you can just use your nail. You know when you mess up your nail polish and it goes like over the edge? Your skin, you can just use your nail. Scrape off the little extra bit. There we go. So the little point on top, I made him turquoise too. All right, now let me work on this other stripe. And obviously, if you have a smaller, more detail-oriented brush that you love in your little craft supplies, if you have them, you could always use that. And then you can also come back and touch up with white paint if you need to. All right, not bad. Went a little bit over there more than I wanted to. I might come back and touch it up with some white. I also might not because 
whose craft kit of the month is this? Mine. This one's gonna sit on my little record player in my kitchen. I'm an old school record player from my grandfather. So like the top closes and they open up and the record's under there. So I put a little decor stuff in there because every kitchen needs a record player, right? See, cute, yay. All right, back to our pink stuff. So you will get out <coughs> yet another sponge or you can even use the opposite end of one of the sponges if you wanted to. I don't think anything else needed gray, right? Yeah. And you're also not going to use a lot of the pink. All right, don't get too much on here. Again, dab it off. Now I will do like long strokes on this frame instead of dabbing it on like I do for words and just go in the direction of the frame and this pink looks pretty good with one coat but it definitely looks better with two so you will probably want to two coat anything you do pink And then we've got this little flower here. That one's getting painted pink. Oh, no, it's not. That's a yellow one. I should look a little closer at what I got there. This one is our other pink one. Let me give it a little love here. There we go. And this is obviously the colors I am telling you just so you can paint it just like the picture. You, of course, can paint it however you want. And when you put the pink on, you should be able to still see like the etched lines at the little center of the flower. So it should be, it should be cute. And then I'm doing one of the two littlest ones pink. Um, that's what gets glued on the April showers round. If you're doing this right, you're going to end up with paint all over your fingers. If you're not, shame on you. That's half the fun. <laughs> but you do want to make sure that you're wiping your fingers off between touching different color pieces. I have done that plenty of times, like transfer to another piece, the color from the previous pieces we painted. All right, I'm looking at my green leaves. I think they look good. I don't think I need another coat for them. I like the way it looks. The pink, I probably will do another coat. All right, then let's look at yellow. Yellow is this flower here. And then the outline of the boots. Ta-da! That one needs a little touching up around the edges there. I put a little sandpaper can't take care of. You want to be careful because this little outline is kind of delicate. There we go. That looks good. So we've got um, also the smaller of the two remaining flowers that kind of look alike. Jeez Louise. All right, so you have these two flowers left. You're gonna take the smaller one is gonna be yellow. Um, you can always check it by looking at the flower pot. 
because the bigger one fits right here with the outlines there. That's going to be our purple flower, right? So that's why we need to save this one. That one would not fit. It's too small. All right, so our yellow pieces here. Open up your yellow. It's a, I think it's called Buttercup Yellow. It's also an Anita's Acrylic Craft page, duh. It's a pretty lighter yellow. I didn't want like a super bright yellow. All right, I'm gonna use the skinny end because that's gonna help me on the boots outline. If get any that goes over the edge, I'm just gonna wipe it off with my fingers there. And we'll have to decide on a second coat with this one. Typically lighter colors like yellow and white and stuff. You're gonna end up with second coats if you want the color to really pop. Well, I'm pretty happy with how the pink dried. I thought for sure I was gonna be doing a second coat on that pink, but I don't know about that. Looks pretty good. I have got to make a post in our DIY Divas group where we are now, as well as like the main page. Um, I have been meaning to tell y'all. I have saved a whole bunch, I think nearly all, my paint videos and little tutorials and stuff I've done along the way um, to a YouTube channel. So now if you're looking for a particular video, right? Like if you get behind on the craft kit of the month and you're like, oh, I need the video from two months ago, three months ago, whatever. Um, and you'd have to be like scrolling through Facebook posts to try to find it or go over the video section and figure out which one it is, right? So I've just got it all put up on YouTube now. It's just Julie's Woodcrafts. If you look on YouTube at Julie's Woodcrafts, you will find the channel. So it's got like all previous videos. And then I'd like to do some more like quick little DIY tutorials like I've done before with dry brushing. I'll probably do some tie in bows and a few other things that um, different techniques like the wood tops I'm doing on some of my new pieces where I paint the top of the round with like a faux wood look. Um, so I've got some ideas for those and I feel like having it all on a YouTube channel makes it just a little bit more accessible. Like if what you're really looking for is a paint video, then just go there. Right, because it's that's what it's all about. So I'm gonna post the link, but if you want to look, it's just Julie's wood crafts. Okay, so actually, I'm cool with the pink. Oh, except for I missed a spot. Dang it! Since I missed a spot. To go back and do this. I'm gonna leave the flowers like they are. I'm not gonna do another coat because I like that you can see their centers really well. And I'm afraid if I do another coat, it might kind of fill those in. All right, so now the frame got a second coat. And the process of that, hey, anybody else do crap like this? <laughs> I got pink on my April showers, which was already painted. Nice and pretty and all done. Now I gotta touch it up. <laughs> See, y'all, it happens. It does happen sometimes. Okay, um, we have one large flower that's getting painted purple and one little bitty flower that's getting painted purple. Um, and then I think we'll have painted all the things. I'm gonna come back and second coat those. I was originally thinking of doing a light purple, but I really liked a pop of a little richer purple here. So I hope you guys do too. 
I just liked something a little bit. Um, I'm just using the other end of the yellow sponge because I can't help myself but to conserve when possible. But yeah, I, I just thought it like brought something to it just to use a little bit darker color for one thing. Instead of like a lavender. All right. Okay. Um, all we have left now is second coats. If you want to second coat anything, you could always second coat your turquoise on here. If you're feeling like, like I think I painted mine a little bit too soon. So the white wasn't 100% dry. There we go. I'm good with that. Double check everything over here. I know we're going to want to second coat the yellow. We might end up second coating that purple. But let's go ahead and do the yellow. The yellow does look great with a second coat. I mean, you can see from our final product there, it definitely pops against the turquoise. just comes together so cute. I'm very excited for this one. The painted one I have already there I'll be taking to my show this weekend for display. But this painted one once I get it all done is going to be for my house. This one's just for me. Oh I got an itchy nose. All right, um, and definitely the flowers. And the yellow could even get a third coat if you want it to look really solid, because it is such a light yellow. But I think we're gonna be fine with two. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Um, do I want another coat on the purple? I actually don't think I do. I think I'm good. Yeah, are you happy with all of this? Colors, coats, we're good. Okay, so let's start gluing together. Let's pick stuff that is dry to glue together. Um, I wanna go ahead, because we might not glue everything together. Once you get the gist of gluing together, you can glue together yourself. Um, but I do wanna show how we do the little flower pot. Right, so you're going to have the purple, the weird cutout yellow, and the weird cutout pink. So you've got outlines here, and you're just gonna look at these outlines, and they're gonna line up. But before you glue anything down, make sure you know, you've know you got it figured out how they fit together here. And then this last little yellow one kind of fits down in between the other two. And it should kind of line up with the, the outline, right, of the flowers behind it. Right, so that's how we're gonna glue it on, just to give you an idea how it fits together. This is another reason why I love, love, love wood glue because it's got like a really solid hold once it dries but it gives me a little bit of time so that um and you've got your glue pouch so you can snip it open and if you do like a really small hole on the snip you can just like squeeze from the actual glue pouch directly 
to your flower. But wood glue gives you enough time to kind of move things around a little bit. All right, so I put this on here, just lining it up with the outline here on the left side so that it fits there. And you'll see the pieces are still moving around a little bit, which is what we want. My yellow's still a little bit wet, so I have to be careful. Give them a push. So I'm going to be careful pushing my yellow because the paint's still wet. But that's how it all fits together. So the little green leaves stick out around the side. You got your little gray flower pot. Got a good push there, so it's all settled in. There we go. All right, so let's finish up the Mayflowers one. So you're gonna put um, a little bit of glue. If you're squeezing out of the pouch and using a sponge, um, you're gonna use the skinny end of the sponge. All right, to dip it in the glue and just put glue along the back. With the glue, you always want a very thin line or, um, you know, so you almost don't see it because this glue will spread out and it will smush out around the edges. If it does smush out around the edges, my best option for cleaning it up is a pipe cleaner. So if you got a pipe cleaner lying around, which I do somewhere over here, I mean, what makes it really nice is, right, I just fold the pipe cleaner so you've got like kind of a, a pointy end here and I just wipe that around the edges anywhere the glue is pushing, um, smooshed out, right? So that'll help um, clean up any glue if you happen to over glue. All right, let's glue on our pink frame here. Hey, Jeffy buddy. Hey, sweet boy. And then you just need to make room on here for your cute little flower pot and your Mayflowers word. And this for the Mayflowers is definitely where I'm gonna use a sponge to apply the glue. there. All right, so I'm going to put some glue out here and I'm just using the skinny end and just like we did the paint, that's what I'm going to do for the glue on the back. I just dab it all over and I don't want any globs anywhere because that's where it will smush out. Clearly I'm using my most technical language today. Globs and smoosh. So you just make sure the back of the word, and you almost can't see the glue once you've put it on this way. It should just look like a thin, shiny coat of glue on the back. But I do want to make sure I get it on all the spots so everything can stick down. I realized I got a little spot up here I didn't deal with. Children, don't play with X-Acto knives. <laughs> All right, and then we're just gluing that right on top. Yay! <laughs> so there's our first of our four little signs there, all glued together. I'm gonna let y'all do the other ones yourself. 
right? Now that you've got the idea, and that was the most complicated with getting the flowers stuck down when you get ready to glue on your boot, right? He just lines up just like that. You're gonna put um, glue on the back of the boot the same way with the little sponge. And because this is such a thin cut, it can get a little warped. Um, either the wood it came from is warped, which happens sometimes. Um, it's just such a thin cut, it's easy to happen. So this one, I don't wanna do mine yet because my yellow's not 100% dry. I'm gonna put something heavy on it to make sure the outline of the boot stays down. All right, so I'm gonna leave that one for y'all to do. Um, I'm not gonna do it on our live paint, right? So I'm gonna put something heavy on it. Um, honestly, it's light enough. I could probably just put this sign on top of it, right? But just to hold it down so it makes good contact while the glue is drying. Takes at least 30 minutes for the glue to set. So you don't have to leave something heavy on there too long. Um, and then I'll glue together my April showers and my fun little flowers that go on here. A little pink one and a little purple one, right? So I will get those all glued together, plus the Hello Spring that you did um, with your Hello Spring words and this getting painted white. There's the Hello, I forgot my spring. <laughs> But um, those all just glue on the same way as the other one. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, I hope you love your April craft kit of the month. Um, hopefully there are no April showers this weekend at Vintage Market Day Chattanooga. <laughs> um, but that's it. I think we are done for today's live paint. I hope y'all had fun with this one. Um, I hope it did for you what it has done for me, which is just relax me, enjoy the little time, and now I'm ready to go out and get some stuff done in the workshop. Go put some pretty things together. Um, today's always a fun day because like we've been painting all the separate pieces for things and today's the day that all the stuff comes together. So we glue all the pieces together and that sort of thing. So we get a lot of finished products around the workshop today, which is fun. So um, I hope y'all have a great Wednesday. If you are relatively local um, from my address in Cartersville, it's like an hour and 15 minute drive to the Mountain Cove Resort, Resort where Vintage Market Days Chattanooga is. It's actually, like I was saying, outside of Chickamauga, Georgia. Georgia. Um, so if you're more in Cartersville proper, maybe it's an hour and 25 minutes or an hour and a half for you. Um, but worth the drive from what I understand. It's supposed to be an awesome vintage market day shows. And I've seen the videos on the Facebook page. It's beautiful up there too. So it's just like a, a magnificent view too. Um, so it's a beautiful place to, to go to a show. So um, join me this weekend. Stop by and say hello. Um, and y'all, I just dropped my gray sponge and messed that up. Y'all, I'm, I'm special. Anybody else feel me? Feel the same way? I'm gonna have to touch that up now. Hot mess express, y'all. All right, I better go before I screw other stuff up. <laughs> have a great Wednesday. Love you, DOI Divas. Bye.